Aloha, and welcome to the second annual Fish Tank Design Competition. We have an exciting program for you today. This is the culmination of two and a half months of work by Hawaii Island students. My name is Jim Wyban, and I'll be your host today. Our program link is in the chat section if you want to follow along in the program. It's now my pleasure to introduce Gail Takaki. She's vice president of the host organization Next Tech Hawaii. Gail has a long history of dedication and service in Hawaii in the areas of STEM education, promotion, and economic development. She provides important connections to the partnering organizations like the Hawaii Science Technology Museum, Hawaii Community Foundation, and a variety of schools and educational organizations. Gail. Thank you, Jim Wyvan. Good morning, everyone. Parents, families, team coordinators, and all our professional volunteers. Thank you all for joining us today. Fish Tank competitors, this is your day, a day of celebration for all that you've done over the last 13 weeks and this final, final challenge of presenting your solutions to the judges. Can you believe it? It's just amazing that we're already at competition. Before we get started, I thought it would be important to um, tell you a little bit about our organization, both Next Tech Hawaii as well as Fish Tank Design Competition. Fish Tank Design Competition is in its second year and it's presented by Next Tech Hawaii. We are a nonprofit dedicated to inspiring youth to explore STEM learning and to explore STEM careers. Um, I want to share something that we received from one of our really wonderful volunteers at the University of Hawaii. Her name is Dr. Julie Mauer, and here's what she wrote, and I thought it was so moving. Let me read it. Giving our keiki opportunities to work on real world challenges where there is no right or wrong answer is the best learning we can offer. Layering on mentorship and collaboration allows students creativity, ability to learn, listen, from diverse teams and willingness to take risks to really shine. This creates an amazing environment for true learning to happen. Thank you, Dr. Maurer. Uh, we certainly strive to meet these ideals in our work. Our guests, parents, family and friends, and the many uh, volunteers here today. So many have worked together to support each of our teams and I'd like to show you how we did it. May I have um, the next slide? What we tried to do is to wrap each team in a surrounding of really solid support. So each team had a team coordinator and really it was each team who found their coordinator, a, a teacher and in many cases a parent and so these team coordinators were wholly dedicated through the whole process. Each team also had an engineer to serve as a mentor and as a guide through the engineering process that we were um, teaching this group. And then once we knew what their focus was on their problem, that the problem that they were solving, it was really um, nice for us to go and seek experts, subject matter experts, often referred to as SMEs, to provide you added professional support. And then here we are today, a whole team of judges who have already reviewed your written as well as your videos submitted on April 10th and now ready to see your presentations this morning. Post competition, we'll invite you to innovation meetings with people who want to continue helping you, maybe for a deeper look at the work you've already done and 
perhaps discussion about what the next steps could be for you, you and your team. Following that, we'll invite you to a career exploration, one that includes career interests, assessment, as well as team career matches um, so that you can get to know people in your areas of interest. Thank you. Let's move to the next slide. The support doesn't end here. I wanna just recognize the fish tank team helpers. You've met so many along the way. And there are a few that maybe you have not seen on screen yet, but they're there um, helping as well. And for the audience, I'd like to share that there are a number of things that were provided to help our students guide, learn, and um, progress through the 13 week process. So our fish tank helpers, of course, in so many um, varied areas brought their expertise to help us. Live classroom, they had Saturday classes that provided them fun, fun lessons on um, walking through step-by-step step the process that we were re recommending for solution finding. Skills for Success presented essential teamwork as well as leadership skills, and they were fun activities um, as well. And then, of course, some packages have already reached you in recognition for your hard work students and team coordinators and all our professional helpers um, awards and recognition. So the recognition has gone out and today we will start revealing the awards. So hang in there for this wonderful day with us. Thanks for joining us. The innovation and career is still something we're um, looking forward to. And of course, without the help of really great technicians, we couldn't do this virtual classroom and website presentation for you. It has worked really well. The Google Classroom in conjunction with Zoom has been a tremendous uh, way for us to communicate with you virtually. Now for the next slide, I'd like to introduce to our guests because the students are very familiar with the challenge but here are the challenge categories. And they, they are, and thought, they have been thought provoking and has um, motivated our students to decide on one of the following five. Healthcare and life could be healthcare delivery or indoor air quality, um, personal pro um, protection in the area of education. Um, suggested topics at the time was distance learning, um, online resources, social distancing, third area of vulnerable populations could include things like information and service reaching these groups, psychological distress, um, inadequate access to food and learning. In the area of community, um, some suggested areas were maintaining distancing, uh, which is, has been very important in our COVID environment, misinformation, social isolation, and business and the economy, creating safe environments in stores, entertainment, restaurants, and how to businesses can maintain customer loyalty. So they had a lot to choose from, and it's interesting how varied their selections were. Um, I wanna just thank all the students, because if you can imagine students in a challenging environment for school and family and um, social restrictions, they still made the time to join Fish Tank and pour their hearts into it. And as you can imagine, not all teams made it to the finals, but I want a, a message to go out to all students. Let's remember that um, every experience short or even to this day is an avenue for your learning and for your growth. And so let's remember there are wins along the journey for everybody. Some have already shared that they will return for Fish Tank 2022 and that's so encouraging. Now to the finest, we could fi finalists. We couldn't be happier or prouder than, um, we're like parents 
um, joining you for the last 13 weeks. And so you've impressed not just our team, but you've impressed the mentors and SMEs that you've um, engaged with. One of them even shared how in inspired she was from one of you. And so you make us proud. So best wishes today. Do your best on your presentations. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Gail. It's amazing the collaboration and teamwork that went into this program. Fantastic. We have a letter here from uh, Dr. Josh Green, our Lieutenant Governor. We invited him, but he couldn't make it due to a scheduling conflict. So he did send us a letter addressed to the participants and I'd like to read it for you now. Dear students, congratulations on competing in this year's Next Tech Hawaii STEM competition. I'm so happy and proud of all of you for coming this far and continuing to push forward. Your participation in the competition is very important. The amount of time and effort that you've committed to creating solutions to real world problems will ultimately lead you to do much greater things. I was once a young scientist exploring new ideas. And like you, I participated in competitions and studied bi biology before becoming a doctor. And now you're a Lieutenant Governor. The training that I gained from science programs has led me to become the leader that I have been in the wake of this pandemic. During the COVID, COVID era, we've had to rely heavily on science more than ever before. We've had to look at the numbers, make sure we have the right approach using science. We had to reach out to all sorts of people for help. And many of these people were scientists and engineers like yourselves. I hope you know how important it is for you to continue in this path. Hawaii and the world needs more engineers, scientists, doctors, nurses, and biology teachers. We need you all to thrive in your future careers. I expect great things from you all. Not everyone will win the competition, but I know for a fact that each of you will succeed because of your approach to science. I'm excited to see what solutions you come up with for this year and look forward to the great things you'll do for our beloved Hawaii in the near future. Mahalo to the Next Tech Hawaii for providing this wonderful opportunity for our youth to be inspired and pursue STEM careers and become great leaders. I appreciate the parents and all the mentors who nurture, nurture our youth and guide them. Congratulations once again to all of you. I appreciate you all and wish you the best in your future endeavors. With aloha, Josh Green, MD, Lieutenant Governor, Hawaii. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Mahalo, Dr. Green, for the, that inspiring message. With that, it's now time for the competition. Let me share the details of what will happen next. First, we have two groups of judges. Each group of judges will be judging a group of projects. Over the next hour, our fish tank teams will be presenting their solutions to you and our judges. Each team will have five minutes to present their project. After each presentation, they will be followed by their judges into a Zoom breakout room. There, the judges will have the opportunity to ask them questions and help them, final, to fi help them finalize their scores. While a team is talking with their judges, the next team will present their project to us in the main room and another set of judges. This will be repeated until all the six projects have been judged. To get started, we'll have all of our teams, except for Team Live, move into their team respective breakout rooms. Uh, team live, are we ready? Yes. Okay. 
Aloha, this is Noel. Um, Team Live, uh, are you needing me to present your pitch or will you be able to share your presentation as you go along? Um, Nova, do you want to share your screen or have them present the pitch for you? I can share my screen one moment. Okay. Um, actually, can one of you guys please share the screen? Okay, um, I can. Give me a moment just to get it set up. Just about ready here. It's sharing now, and uh, just just guide me. Let me know when you want me to turn the slides. Okay, our first team to present is Team Live. Live is represented by Taylor Harper, Juno Stickley, Leela Lowen, and Nova Stickley. Their project is category is education. Take it away, Team Live. Hi. As always, it's such an honor to be in Fish Tank, especially with an amazing panel of judges. We are Team Live, and our team members are Taylor Harper, Lilla Lowen, Nova Stickley, and Juno Stickley. That's me. We'd like to thank all of the adults and friends who supported us and made this possible. One of the things that sets us apart as a team is that we all already know each other and can work together well as a team. Our idea is to create a virtual environment for school classrooms that would help students and teachers get back into school in a safe environment. Uh, next slide, please. COVID-19 first hit Hawaii on March 6, 2020. Schools, businesses, airlines, and so much more immediately closed down. Suddenly, Zoom school became the new normal. Kids were stuck at home all day, every day, completely unengaged during their schoolwork. Instead of getting to do a fun and interactive science experiment themselves, they got to watch a YouTube video of somebody else doing the experiment. Kids can't focus when they're unstimulated and unengaged. And Zoom school doesn't work, so we need to find a better option. Are you bored attending the typical online Zoom classes where teachers have limited resources and students are engaged? Our idea is to use virtual reality headsets to create an engaging and effective learning platform for both teachers and students. Additionally, our idea allows parents to return to work instead of having to supervise their kids from home. Each student would be given one Vera headset where they simply have to enter in a code and they'd be given access to their class. During the class, they could see their animated forms, raise their hand, take notes, and participate in class activities. Teachers also would have customizable settings for their class. Additionally, they could take their class on field trips to the moon or perform, perform virtual science experiments. However, to allow parents to return to work, the school would be set up and filled with cubicles where students could attend the virtual reality class in their cubicle, allowing their parents to return to work. Paid employees would supervise the students and ensure COVID safety protocols are followed. However, if students or teachers were at risk or weren't comfortable coming back into the school building, they could opt to stay at home with their own virtual reality headset. As the school might be worried about the cost of, of purchasing $100 to $200 headsets for every single student, our idea is to start small in a private school setting. One or two classes could try out the idea, and as teachers, and as teachers could compare the differences between the Zoom learning and the virtual reality classes, the school could apply for more government grants, find discounts, 
or purchase cheaper headset options like the cardboard headset, which costs only around $15. Uh, next slide, please. Our idea sets us apart because it is needed, safe, and engaged. It will be one, getting kids back in school full time, while two, keeping them in a COVID friendly environment, and three, be fun and engaging. Kids will be excited to use this awesome new technology because honestly, what kid wouldn't want to do school in a VR headset? <coughs> Zoom, Google Classrooms, and hybrid setups just aren't working because kids and parents are like are stressed and unhappy. It's time to try something. Our idea is the best way to get kids back in school because it is necessary, safe, and fun. Um, next slide, please. Imagine a world where every kid could have access to a quality education, no matter where they lived. Using our simple and affordable VR classroom, all the student would have to do was get access to a VR headset and they could enter into a virtual room with kids all around the world. During COVID, all students would have an opportunity to participate in an engaging classroom setting from home or in a classroom. Our idea would allow all students and teachers to stay safe and do what works best for them and their families during the pandemic. But the impact our project could have could last way past COVID-19. All students would be able to experience different types of teachers and would have no limit to the number or type of subjects they could learn. Our idea would impact the lives of young students around the world, both during and after COVID-19. Our idea is a feasible and affordable way to change lives all around the world. The goal of our team is to make education available and affordable by creating a new and unique idea to help solve a problem affecting millions of students around the world. Using our idea, kids everywhere could have a chance at a brighter future. Is that the conclusion? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Mahalo. I'm going to stop sharing now. Jim. Jim, you're you're on mute. Okay. Thank you, team live. You folks will be joining your judges in room number one. Ladies and gentlemen, while our next team makes their way into the main room, we have a video for you. Noel. Give me a, give me a moment, one moment. So we've just gone through.
Okay, great. Thanks for that, Noel. Uh, we're now ready for our next team. And their name is Just Getting Started. Okay. And uh, this team is represented by Gavin and Stephen Wagner. And their work is in the cat project category of healthcare and life. So Gavin and Steven, are you ready? Ready. Okay. Gavin's just gonna share his screen so we can get the presentation started. Okay. Sorry, having some technical difficulties. Okay, you guys are both still muted. Yeah, sorry, we're trying to figure out a way to share the presentation while um, being able to change our mics on and off. It doesn't seem to let us go out of the presentation without um, stopping it to turn our mics on and off. Okay. No. Would you... Uh, would you like me to, I believe I have your pitch. Um, you can, uh, I can share it just as I did with the previous one. You, you'll just need to direct me to change the slides. Would that work? Um, I think that we actually have it figured out. We're just hiding the speaker notes. Now. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, actually that would be nice. If you could, um, uh, okay, let give me a moment to just uh, pull that up and I'll share it. Awesome, thank you. Okay, I'll share my screen now. Is that the right slide? Awesome. Okay, take it away. Good morning, I'm Steven and my teammate Gavin and I have been working on this project for the last three months. We're focused on COVID-19 recovery for the island of Hawaii and we use the engineering design process to help with the healthcare and life topic. There are over 2000 doctors and nurses on Hawaii Island and we've read articles saying there's a doctor shortage and that nurses are burning out. They're working overtime to keep us healthy and we wanted to see if we could help them. First, we interviewed doctors to find their biggest needs and problems, which were related to their face masks. We designed four prototypes, printed them out using a 3D printer and got feedback to improve them. This presentation will talk about our solution, which is effective and lightweight. I think we made a great design, but it wouldn't have been possible without a lot of help. Next slide, please. First, we would like to thank the fish tank team for all of the lessons and assistance, the doctors at Shriners Honolulu and Sunshine Pediatrics for interviews, our mentor for a lot of engineering advice and help with the final report, our mom for support during the competition, a 3D printing subject matter expert, and two Hawaii Army National Guard members for feedback. These people gave us the tools to design a prototype that fulfills our problem statement. At this point, I'll turn the presentation over to my teammate Gavin to talk more about the problem statement and our final design. Next slide, please. We wrote our problem statement after interviewing two doctors. They said that face masks shown in option A weren't effective because they couldn't drink water. 
option C costed $275, so that was not that great. Finally, we looked all over the internet for solutions, and there weren't any that were useful. This helped us write our problem statement and start our design. After we had a good understanding of the problem, we started designing a solution, which I will talk about on the next slide. The thing that sets us apart is that we used a lot of criteria to make sure that we are meeting our problem statement. This table shows the criteria and how each of our prototypes scored. The scores show that we kept on getting better. We used the engineering design process and the Vectory 3D design website to make all four prototypes. These prototypes are shown at the bottom. Vectory takes a long time to learn, but you can do a lot with it once you've learned it. The main thing that we worked on was getting the mask off the, off the ears and making it easy to clip and unclip the mask to drink water. I will talk more about our final design, option G, on the next slide. Uh, if you could also start the video. Was there a video here? Uh, or, yes, oh, here. Uh, yes. Oh. oh. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. The thing, the thing that says this, oh, sorry. Here is the final design of the Vector 3D design website. You can see the fish tank logo on the mask holder, and we printed it on a QWERTY XMaker printer. It is more effective than normal masks because it combined the face shield and mask together using the 3D printer. Our solution makes it so that when a healthcare worker uses a mask, they do not have to worry about their comfort. It also allows them to drink water and looks aesthetically pleasing. Our idea is easy to make and assemble as well as being light. At this point, I'll turn the presentation back over to my teammate, Steven, to talk about what we learned in the competition. Next slide, please. As you can see, we made this word cloud here out of all the notes that we took during fish tank lessons, which just shows some of what we learned from fish tank. We learned how to use the engineering design process better uh, and 3D printers more efficiently. And lastly, and most importantly, how to work as a team. These are all valuable things that we can use in our future careers. To conclude this presentation, I'll talk about the impact on Hawaii Island if our project is selected. Next slide, please. If our project is selected, we could give an improved mask holder and face shield combo to every doctor and nurse on Hawaii Island. We would need $3,000 in materials and volunteers could be organized to print and assemble the units. Our solution connects back to our problem statement because it ensures that doctors and nurses can be more efficient because they don't have to worry about their mask being comfortable or difficult to get off. This would help the people helping us and make progress in recovering from COVID-19. Thank you for your time. Okay, great job, Gavin and Steven. Excellent presentation. Thank now you. you will move into the judging room two, where you're going to talk to your judges about your project. While we in the main room are in this transition, Jake is going to introduce a poll for you folks. Uh, Jake. Yeah, so um, I'll be just doing a, a poll. Uh, it'll come up on the Zoom screen. Uh, and this one's gonna be about, um, about fish tank. Um, and I'll end the poll in about one minute. Um, Noel, could you play some music? Uh, yes, I can. <laughs> And it's not going to be ACDC, I tell you that. <laughs> I don't know why the ACDC gets stuck, stuck in my brain here. <laughs> Maybe it's because I need coffee. Yeah. Where is that?
All right, okay. So the, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just explain the, the question or read the questions real fast. So how did you hear about the, this event? Uh, it sounds like uh, it's, it's other. Uh, in chat, could you put in uh, what the other meant since you couldn't really put in uh, um, in the, the poll? Uh, could you type in what the other, uh, whoever picked other, could you type in chat? Uh, how did you hear about the event? Um, and it sounds like, have you ever attended, attended Fish Tank before? And no, this is the, my first time. So majority of you have chosen that. That's great uh, to hear from you guys. Um, yeah, and welcome. Uh, it sounds like eight people were last year. So uh, it's great to um, see you back, uh, see, you, see you back this year. Okay, we're ready. Back to you, Jim. Okay, thank you, Jake. Uh, thank you for filling in our uh, survey, everyone. Okay, so our next team is Tri-5. They are Isabel Au, Riley Au, and Travis Quesenberry. Their project category is healthcare and life. Take it away, Tri-5. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for being here. My name is Riley. My name is Travis. My name is Isabel. And we are the Tribe 5 team, composed of, our, of the first letters of our names. And we are the fifth team of this fish tank competition. Our team coordinator is Janelle Au, and our team mentor is Mr. Tamimi. We chose to take the educational route because we, as high school juniors and seniors, are missing out on a big part of our high school experience. So because we chose the educational route, we decided that what better way to find the problems in the educational field than interviewing teachers themselves. So we went out and we interviewed several teachers from both private and public schools, and we found out that many teachers actually don't know how to properly format their classrooms to, to, to properly reduce the spread of COVID. Uh, most of the teachers that we interviewed said that the information that they got either had too much information that was kind of overwhelming for them to implement their classrooms or had too little and just seemed unnecessary to use. Well, one teacher actually had to go out and buy their own CO2 detector and they were using it to try and find areas in the room that could be better ventilated. And to do this, they had to actually bring in their own students to actually see where CO2 was building up and this was just all unsafe and they just had to be doing it themselves was just not very safe and not very effective. So our solution was to actually do the research for the teachers. Uh, we went out and we researched uh, how to properly ventilate classrooms and all that, and we were we decided on creating a material that teachers could use to help better format their classrooms, and help them reduce the um, the transmission of COVID between their students. This is our final product we put together. Through a narrowing down of ways to express our research, we decided on an infographic flyer type of product. So here it is. Now, are there already resources put out like our project? Yes and no. So the CDC guidelines covers great points about how and has visuals of classroom layouts just like ours. However, they do not focus on ventilation, something we noticed was lacking and something that we heavily emphasize on in our project. And because of ventilation being focused on, this emphasizes the inexpensive bonus of our product. Now I'm going to emphasize this. Our product is very simple because our purpose and plan was to do the extensive researching ourselves to provide an easy to follow and understandable product to Hawaii teachers. Our checklist consists of spacing points, important ventilation points, additional steps and suggestions, tips and do nots, and a checking point that CO2 detectors can be used, but only as a gauge of ventilation. So what sets apart our product from other resources already out there, like Riley said, is that it is Hawaii specific. And many of the resources already out there are focused on places that are um, very hot and very cold. 
And that's something that Hawaii is not. Something to keep in mind is that it has constant temperature in winter and in summer. So there is no significant temperature change. So this means that students are not at risk of hypothermia or heat stroke or anything like that. So we took that into consideration in our, um, in our checklist. Um, in addition to this, Hawaii has altering trade winds and rainy conditions, which we also considered in our infographic. It is so important to be safe and take necessary precautions, such as being aware of ventilation during this global pandemic. We believe that our product, when implemented in classrooms, will increase safety and ultimately decrease the number of coronavirus cases. Thank you all very much for listening to our fish tank presentation. Stay safe and have a nice day. Thank you very much for your pitch, Isabel, Riley, and Travis. You may now join your judges in judge room number one. And while our team, our next team is assembling, Jake will once again uh, initiate a poll to you folks in the audience. Jake. Okay, so for the uh, judges who are in room one, uh, if you click on the bottom, you can rejoin the breakout room. Um, and if you're having trouble doing that, just let me know uh, in chat. Um, but again, you can click on the bottom, it says breakout rooms, it's like four boxes, you can click on it and then rejoin the judge room, because uh, you're already invited to that. All right, great. So I'm going to run another poll. Uh, just a quick poll um, about COVID problem uh, categories and uh, which one uh, you relate to um, the most. Thanks Noel for the music. All right, it seems like everyone voted. So I'm gonna end the poll here and share the results. Um, it looks like we have a wide variety of, of people and experts here. Um, and kind of all these uh, problem categories relate to um, a lot of different people. So it's cool to see each one uh, being picked. Um, and it looks like health and, health and life, healthcare and life and community was, was the most, so. Uh, Thank you guys for, for doing the poll and back to you, Jim. Thanks, Jake. Okay, we're ready for our next team, which is CIP. And they're represented by Cassandra Butler and Davey Butler. CIP solution category is education. CIP, take it away. Hi, can I take over the screen sharing? Sorry, who was that? All right. Yes, Davey, we're good. Um, oh, okay, so hi, my name's Cassandra. My name's Davey. Our team is called the CIP, which stands for the COVID Information Portal. We are two siblings who live in Pahoa. And we noticed the misinformation surrounding COVID-19 whenever you do something as simple and basic as a Google search. Although you can find data, it is poorly organized and not good for all platforms, such as mobile. I've noticed that at my school, some people voice their concerns about getting the vaccine. Many people are unwilling to get vaccinated, even when given the choice, mostly on a basis of not knowing anything about the vaccine. I've also noticed that the majority of government websites specific to COVID-19 are very poorly designed, and most of them don't work on mobile devices. Internet traffic is split half and half between mobile devices and laptop slash desktop use. 
Not only are these websites hard to use on mobile, they're designed poorly in general and have an excess of information not specifically related to COVID-19. This web page here has data that's usually two to three days out of date and clip text here so we can't understand what it's saying. This data dashboard here looks good at first glance, but you can't zoom in on mobile and most of the data is unreadable. And this is the home page where the header blocks everything and you can't see anything on the page. To solve this problem, we decided to make a COVID information portal, a website that works on all platforms and has the specific information one needs related to COVID-19 topics. This website will be accessible to anyone, including people who don't fully understand how to use devices because it will be designed in a simple and easy to use way. That being said, let's get into some of the features of our website. Our website will have sub pages on travel, latest COVID-19 data, social relief programs, and vaccination information. The page on travel will include the latest news regarding travel bans to certain countries and which countries have recently lifted their bans. Along with this, we will explain the process to travel to and from Hawaii and have information on necessary steps like getting tested before your flight and potential quarantines on landing. The page on social relief programs will include information on how to get free food from the food bank and how to apply for things like stimulus checks. The patient COVID-19 data includes updated data from covidactnow.org, which we found to contain the most accurate and most up-to-date uh, data. We use this data to show weekly, daily, and monthly counts of things like new cases, deaths, and the latest numbers of vaccinations. We'll be able to update the website if we find any abnormalities in the data, like a huge spike in recent cases, and make sure to inform our users. On this page, we'll also include a feature where you can be emailed every morning at 7 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. The email will include the latest daily counts, along with any, any other information we feel we should share, including latest COVID-19 news. The last page on vaccination information is the most important page on our website, and we will go into depth about things like common myths, how to sign up for a vaccine, and where to go to get one. We will do all of this in a friendly way, not forcing any of the information on the users of the website, so we have the highest chance of making more people get the vaccine. With more and more people being vaccinated daily on this island, we're growing closer to getting the state COVID free and our goal is to reach this reality faster. Uh, thank you for watching our presentation and we hope you enjoyed hearing about our project. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask us now and we'd like to shoot a quick thanks to both the fish tank staff and our team coordinator for giving us such a lovely time while making this project. Okay, thank you so much team CIP, well done. Now you will join with your judges in judging room two. And while we are uh, waiting for the next team to get set up, we'll have uh, Jake come back again with one more poll. Jake? Thanks, Jim. Okay, so again, for the judge room two, I believe, uh, to go back into the judge room, you can click on this breakout room uh, icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. It's like these four squares. So you can click on it and you can join back into judge room two because you're already invited to that. Um, so thanks judges. Um, thanks for, for dealing with Zoom and me. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start the next poll. Uh, it's gonna be just a quick one. Uh, it's, it's actually gonna be icebreaker. So um, it's gonna be three questions. Um, I'll start it now. Um, and thanks, Noel, for the music. So three questions, just fun icebreaker questions. Um, yeah. Thanks, Jake. Okay, we're going to give <clears throat> give our judges and the next team uh, a moment to uh, get back into the main room to listen to this presentation. And uh, our next team is or are mind benders. Hi, this is Noel. Um, is anyone ever uh, able to confirm that the judges are back from the other room? I'll verify, hold on.
Uh, we have about two more minutes left in their judging, so. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, Opal, I got your note. We're just uh, waiting to make sure that the, the uh, your judges are all in in the main room before we we proceed. So I'm I'm just going to share my uh, your slide while we wait, but we'll hold off until they we get confirmation that they're back. So uh, Jake, I think this is where uh, where you uh, you do a song and dance, right? While we wait. I can do an, I can do another poll. I got a lot. <laughs> It looks like they're all back. They are. Okay. Okay, we're all back together and uh, our next team is ready to go. They are the mind benders and they are represented by Jada Cathcart, Chasky Harrison, and Opal Jewels. They will be presenting their project that addresses the education category. Take it away, mind benders. Um, hold on, let's just like get everything okay. Um, hello judges, we're team mind benders and we're here to talk to you about our COVID-19 education project. The problems. Hold on. The problems. Some people, including teens in our community, do not wear masks or socially distance, which contributes to the spread of COVID-19. As a team, we want to educate teenagers in order to increase their awareness of how social distancing, mask wearing, and practicing good hygiene can prevent the spread of COVID. The teenage attention span. Have you heard the saying, you think and have an attention span of a goldfish? Well, it kind of applies in this situation because most 12 to 16 year olds have an attention span of approximately 24 to 48 minutes. And on an average day, I have five and a half hours of classes on Zoom. These online classes aren't always engaging and half the time students are watching YouTube, texting friends or playing video games. We don't have online health classes, but if we did, only a small percentage of students would actually listen. Now, if we brought celebrities into the picture, we may have a better outcome. Our solution, if someone that teens admire were teaching a health class, more students would be willing to take the time to listen. That's why our solution is to find a way to get influencers like actors and social media stars to virtually talk to public school and charter school students from grades 6 to 12 about COVID safety. We think that this will be more effective than the average health class taught by our regular teachers. This way, students are more interested and want to be engaged in class. Think of it as if you're a student. Imagine having your favorite celebrity teach your classes. Pretty cool, right? Well, what would you do during classes when your favorite YouTuber could be teaching you instead? We need a health class, especially during the pandemic, but we don't currently have any. Students should be able to learn the most effective ways to keep themselves, their families, and their communities safe. These are the COVID education packs. At the start of the program, we would send out these packs to every student in grades six to 12 in the state of Hawaii. In these packs, we would have a cloth mask, two disposable masks, a small notebook, hand sanitizer, and an APIC note card. And we'd also have coupons for the notebooks and hand sanitizer. Why our program should be funded now. Our COVID education program should be funded because student, because teens are quite social and that makes them very vulnerable to contracting coronavirus. The numbers of COVID-19 cases are still spiking, but stores, malls, and other social gathering places are reopening. This makes us that more unvaccinated teenagers are getting together and spreading the virus. This is why teens need to be educated ASAP and our program is the best way to do it. Advantage, celebrities. 35% of people age, ages 12 to 18 in the US have Instagram. 
Due to these people being online for an average of seven hours a day, there is no doubt that they have seen a celebrity. These kids must look up to someone. If you bring someone that would normally distract them from class and have them teach the class, would they pay attention? I think so. Mahalo Nui Loa, and thank you for your time. Um, these are just some people that we would like to thank for helping make this pro possible. And we hope that you consider funding our program. Thank you. Thank you, Jada, Chasky, and Opal. Good job. You now will return to the judging room number one where you'll get to talk to your judges. And we're going to take a break as we wait for our next team to assemble in the main room. All right, thanks. Welcome everyone back to the main room. And we're going to move on in our program. Our next team are called Big Brain Builders or BBB. And they're represented by Satchel Duke, Coe Bolton and Lance Vitalis. They will be presenting their idea in the healthcare and life category. Take it away, BBB. Wait, should I share the yeah, slides right go now? Go ahead, sh share, share the screen. Hello, we are BBB and our project is about helping people exercise our introductions. Hi, my name is Lance. I am six, I'm in sixth grade. They call me the big brainer. I love to come up with ideas and I also like to take notes. Hello, my name is Cleo and I'm in sixth grade. My friends call me the happy one. I try to boost our team's morale and think of possible problems. Hi, my name is Satchel. I'm in sixth grade. I like to come up with ideas and I'm basically the leader. This current pandemic has given us many problems. Many people have gotten out of shape because of quarantine due to inactivity, eating more, and possibly having depression. We made a pro project to motivate uh, making people do more activities and exercises using incentives such as money. Our project consists of uh, des designing a watch style tracker, uh, next slide, by the way, um, that will monitor your location, movement, and heart rate. Also, if you wanted to use a treadmill, that you could get an attachment that tracks it. at times a white line would pass through a sensor instead of using your location. Next slide. Um, we will impl implement a quest system. Quests are supposed to help you get your daily, daily goal. This system will re reward you for doing your quests with redeemable credits. Also, there will be a storyline. Uh, next slide, by the way. Uh, that'll appeal to young children. We will also try to implement a, a leaderboard for the competitive people. Next slide. Uh, I think this will project this project will appeal to many people. Wait, that's Cleo's, right? Next slide. Well, benefits to the community. The project will our product will help the community by helping the people who suffer from the obesity epidemic by encouraging them to exercise with gift cards. Even though our target audience uh, are people that suffered from the obesity epidemic, this will help all people get back into shape this is how we will try to stop the obesity epidemic uh, that's pretty much it thank you uh, that that was supposed to be the slide next but okay thank you oh. are you guys finished or Sorry. yep we're finished okay no thank you so much Big Brain Builders, BBB, for that excellent presentation. You guys are going to go into your judging room number two to chat with your judges at this time. And while BBB is in the uh, breakout room with the judges, we'll have another intermission. And this is an opportunity for folks to take a little break and uh, clear your brain for the next presentation. Okay, so for the rest of us, while the folks are in the judging rooms, uh, Jake's gonna be conducting a 
vote for the People's Choice Award for our presentations. So uh, Jake, over to you on that subject. Great. So, hey everyone. Um, I'll be uh, conducting the People's Choice Poll. So the, there's gonna be a, an award for $500 to the team um, of the People's Choice uh, to win the People's Choice Award. Um, and so please, if you can scan that, so if you have an iPhone, you can put your camera and you can just hold the screen down right on the, um, the QR code, you can scan that, or you can use the link. Um, there is, it, it's a poll um, as shown on the left, kind of the left side of the blue and green. Um, you click start, one entry per person, please. Um, and then you can vote three teams. So it needs to be three. It can't be two, it can't be four, it needs to be three. Okay, thanks, Jake. That was uh, interesting. And we'll see how that works out. I mean, it's a, it's a tough, uh, tough choice because the presentations have all been uh, excellent and very interesting projects. Um, are we ready to proceed to the next uh, step with the guest speakers? Yes, we are. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me get to that then. At the start of our competition, we asked Ravi Pare to share information about design thinking. We asked Doug Adams and Christian Wong to offer guidance on COVID-19 and inspiration for the work that our teams were taking on. We are once again honored to have those folks here with us today. They had a chance to view the presentations and I'd like them to share with us a few words about what they've experienced. First off is Ravi. Ravi Pare is a design thinking strategist from Oceanit and describes his task as humanizing technology. He's a graduate of the Stanford Des Design Program at the D School. And since 2013, Ravi has been leading both internal and external teams through the design process to develop innovative solutions for complex problems. Take it away, Ravi. Uh, thanks, Jim. Uh First of all, I think it, this is a great opportunity just to see all the presentations and the work that the teams had done over the last three months. Uh, in the present, I, I got a chance to look at the reports that Noel had shared yesterday as well, and they were so well done. And more importantly, I think in challenges such as this, uh, the key thing is about the, the identifying the problem and the right problem because the solution can only be as good as the problem itself. Uh, and, and what I noticed is that each and every team had a good process in place, which is what makes for a very good solution, because that is what they will carry forward with them, irrespective of whether they win the competition or whether they implement these solutions in the community. Having said that, it's, it was so interesting to see that each of the teams had thought out the end-to-end -end part of it, not only about identifying the problem, but how this would be implemented. How can we reduce the risk of implementing these um, solutions? Uh, so, and a lot of them also had addressed some complex things in a way where, you know, in, in design, the in design world, we always consider changing behaviors of people as one of the hardest things to do. And I noticed that a majority of the teams were looking at that as a task, right? Changing behaviors of people, for, for example, getting vaccinated or being able to uh, follow better protocols. Uh, so I am thrilled to look at how much each of these teams have accomplished in the last three months. And thanks to all the mentors who had supported them because without a doubt, with those, without those support, these students wouldn't have worked so hard and bring their best efforts forward. Uh, and I, I, I wish that the, uh, the competition goes on every year uh, and more and more teams participate in this. Thanks again, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ravi. Your thoughts were uh, quite interesting and spot on for this uh, fantastic group of students. Next up is uh, Doug Adams. Doug is uh, currently the uh, director of R&D at the County of Hawaii. He is a retired Lieutenant Colonel 
from the US Army. He served 20 years as Army Intelligence Officer after graduating from West Point. He's an attorney and he is active as the Vice Chairman of WH Shipman. With his wife, Colonel Deb Lewis, in 2010 and 2011, they bicycled over 18,000 miles through all 50 states to highlight the issues facing our country's veterans, military, and their families. Thank you, Doug. Here you go. The old find the mute button before you start talking. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thanks so much, Jim. And uh, it's a, a real pleasure to be able to um, talk to all of you, particularly at the uh, at the end of this really incredible process. Um, the and, and it's going to be a little difficult to follow Ravi, um, uh, but I will endeavor to do so. I, I think the first thing I would say is all the efforts that we've seen these six teams engage in, um, none of the, that effort will be wasted. And my experience is, is that um, any effort that has been um, worked on uh, where you where a team gets together, they've identified uh, the problem, they've figured out the way that they want to go about um, achieving some type of solution to it and then developing whatever that solution is and then presenting it's in, in an influencing and advocacy kind of way. Um, none of that effort is ever wasted. Um, and so congratulations to the teams in particular um, for the effort that they've, that they've made uh, during these few months here um, during the fish tank competition. I would also say that the work that they have done looking at these challenge categories is just so vital. Um, I, I have taken notes during these um, presentations to take back to uh, my team in the county at the Department of Research and Development. Uh, we are looking at um, ways that we will recover um, as a community, as a county, as an island um, from this pandemic. And the idea that uh, there is, um, that there is uh, some type of cap on the ideas that are out there and that it can only occur by a few folks that maybe are um, coming from universities or from um, government agencies, of course, is just um, malarkey to coin a phrase. Uh, all the ideas out there are really, really important. And so I've been very, very um, happy and grateful, frankly, to hear um, a lot of the um, information, a lot of the ideas, um, and then the presentations themselves of those ideas uh, moving forward. I mean, for example, just the idea of the incentives for the exercising that we heard from um, our team BBB, right? It was about um, capturing habits. And we all know that habits are going to be the way that we move, that we're able to move forward as communities, as families, as individuals. If we can, if we can figure out the kind of habits that we need, that will go a long way towards actually creating something sustainable because ultimately it's gonna be um, sustainability sustainable practices um, that are going to be necessary uh, in the years to come um, and make this an opportunity, not just as a problem, as a pandemic as a problem, but and I'll take the, the lessons out of that and the lessons from the work that's been done here and use those as an opportunity to overcome the challenges that we have moving forward. I, I obviously feel that we are in good hands with the youth um, that we have seen here today. They're gonna to be leaders in the future. And um, I'm excited to see what they're gonna be bringing to the fore um, as we move forward uh, to try and take care of our community, um, take care of our island, take care of the people um, in the generations to come. So I'm, I'm uh, very, very thankful to be able to um, provide some type of conversation, some type of comment on um, what is really about the kids and their coordinators and the mentors um, and the work that they've done. So congratulations to all and, and thanks Jim for um, having me here today. Thanks so much, Doug. Uh, point well taken on your uh, observations of the kids and what, what a great uh, job di they did in this program. Our next speaker is Christian Wong. Christian is the executive director of Hawaii Science and Technology Museum, 
which provides STEM education experiences for the keiki of Hawaii Island through science camps, after school programs, tutoring, special events, robotics education, and exhibits promoting STEM literacy. Christian, take it away. Actually, Jim, um, Christian is uh, just about to join us here. Uh, we give me a second here. <laughs> Christian, are you here now? I'm here, I'm here. Sorry for the delay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, well, you, just missed, uh, you just missed your introduction and uh, I'm going to uh, stop sharing so you could, uh, you could make your comments as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late, but the reason is, is because it took me so long to review all the projects. I am just, this is just amazing. The teams are, you guys are so impressive. I'm just blown away by the work you guys did. I've been looking it over since early this morning. I haven't even had time to brush my hair. I mean, that's, that's how long it took me to get through all these projects, pages and pages of documentation and just the engineering process, you know, the design process. You guys are outstanding. All the teams did such, such an amazing job and touching in, in different areas, you know, that are all so important to COVID, you know, like with the mind benders having their celebrity education, DVD, the, the weight loss and um, fighting depression through the tracking. I'm going to take you up on that, by the way, because I'm going to bankrupt you guys by losing weight. So I, I definitely want to try that out. Um, just getting started, that face shield mask combo, just amazing design process and documentation. The Tri-5 perfect classroom design. I mean, that is so useful I mean, and pertinent to, to what is happening right now. The schools are trying to get, get up and running in a safe way for the students um, and for the teachers. Um, the virtual reality classroom, I mean, so, so creative. What a creative way to approach the problem. And then the COVID info portal. I mean, so many families and parents especially are looking for good information about what is happening. And there's, there's not like a good central area where you can access all of this. Um, so. You know, thank you, students. You guys, you guys did an outstanding job. Outstanding. Thank you, mentors. Thank you um, to all the subject matter experts. I mean, so impressive. Very impressive. Thank you so much for for letting me be a part of this as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Christian, uh, and to our other two speakers. Thank you, all three of you, for your inspiring words. We appreciate your contribution and and uh, commitment to the fish tank concept. Everyone, we've now learned that the judges have made their decisions and they have incorporated their scores from the presentations with the scores given for the team deliverables, that combination, the engineering notebooks, the engineering report and their pre-recorded project presentations. So without any further delay, we want to announce our winners today. We're going to start first with the category winners. For this year's competition, we've incorporated the following category awards. Most inspirational, best idea, best engineering notebook, best teamwork, and then the people's choice. First off, here to present the most inspirational award is one of our judges, Councilwoman Heather Kimball. Heather? Hi, thank you. First of all, let me just congratulate all of the teams on their efforts and their presentations today. And all of you are an inspiration just for taking the initiative to participate in the fish tank program. So congratulations to everyone. This, this award was uh, based on scores from our judges and the winner of the most inspirational project will win $500. Today's winner for the most inspirational project goes to Team Mindbenders, congratulations. Our next award goes to Best Idea and I'll pass it over to Rebecca Choi to present the award. All right, congratulations Team Mindbenders. And um, I get to present uh, the Best Idea Award. 
And there were so many wonderful ideas uh, in our competition today. So thank you for everybody's uh, contribution to that. This award is also based on scores provided by our judges and the winner for the best idea award gets $500. And the winning team is team 11, just getting started. You guys created the improved face shield and mask combination. So congratulations for the best idea. And the next award is for the best engineering notebook. And for that, I'll turn it over to Doug Simons. Well, hello, Rebecca. Great job, everybody. This is super exciting to see all your projects come together like this. And uh, my first fish tank judging uh, experience, and it's been really great. Um, so this uh, award, I have three announcements to, to provide everybody. It's based on scores provided by our judges and presented to the owners of the notebooks that were judged to have the best quality. Um, there are three places in this award category. So I'll start out with the winner of the third best engineering notebook prize and that um, carries with it $100 and that goes to Lilla Lowen. Um, and she is from uh, the live group. And then the winner of second place prize and that carries with it $150 goes to Taylor Harper also from the live group. And finally, the best engineering prize and $250 goes to Riley Owl from Tri5. So congrats to everybody. Great job. I really enjoyed reading your notebooks. Those are, those are particularly fun. Next award is for best teamwork. And I will pass the baton over to Lisa Mason. All right, thank you, Doug. Um, so I'm going to be presenting the award for best teamwork. And this award was determined by our fish tank helpers. It is presented to the team that demonstrated the most consistent and united presence throughout the competition. They showed the greatest commitment to working together during this journey, and they had the best response rates in Google Classroom. So the winner of the best teamwork award gets $500. And the winning fish tank team is Mindbenders. Congratulations, Mindbenders. The last award is the People's Choice Award. And I'm going to turn this over to our very own Renee Ishisaka to present this award. Thanks, Lisa. The People's Choice Award was decided by everybody during the competition. Um, unfortunately, I have not been told who the winner is. So this is gonna be fun trying to present this one. So if anybody knows who the winner is, I'm like to yeah, I'll send it. it. I'll send it in chat, sorry. I <laughs> okay. just got the results. It was very close. It was very close, but I got a winner. All right, thanks Jake. So this, this award was determined with the polls during the competition from the audience and everybody who got to see all of our amazing teams present. And this award is for $500 to the winning team. So congratulations to Fish Tank team just getting started. Amazing showing and congratulations for impressing the audience today. Congratulations to all of our winners and all of our participants. Thank you so much. And Jim, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Okay, uh, congratulations for all of those category award winners. You guys did a terrific job. We're now nearing the end of the process, but we still have the big three, uh, top three awards to present. And we're very fortunate today to have a VIP guests to uh, award those top three prizes. And uh, he's our mayor, Mitch Roth. So Mitch, the floor is yours. As Mitch, um, sorry, I've been trying to track uh, entry into the waiting room. So uh, I'm, I guess I'll ask Doug. <laughs> Doug. Sure. So, um, so Mitch is, uh, Mitch, I spoke to Mitch about 20 minutes ago. He was on his way back from an event that he had in Pahoa. Um, he anticipated being um, on the call around this time. So perhaps we can have another poll um, while we wait for um, our mayor to, to join us. Let's do a poll. 
Jake, what do you think? Sure, I got a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'll launch the poll right now. Okay. Okay, this is a good one. I love watching them fluctuate. <laughs> what if I've done all these things? And then you got to choose the strangest, what you think is the strangest. <laughs> These polls, by the way, are from Lene. So thank you, Lene, for um, a lot of the polls. All right, it seems like 42 out, oh, 43 out of 46 voted. Um, so I'm gonna end the vote in like a few seconds. Uh, but the questions were, if you could choose any age to stay in for the rest of your life, which would it be? And the second question was, what's the strangest thing you did while attending an online meeting? All right, so I'm going to end the poll, um, and then I'll sh share the results. So the, for the first question, it's 20 to 30. That's funny. Um, but everyone chose at least one, uh, at least one people ch chose each, each age group. So that's interesting. And it's like a perfect a perfect triangle it's a perfect bell curve so that's interesting as well um and then the second one actually is is the the, the most picked is other but my lips are sealed so. we have lots of secrets in our team in our audience it looks like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah i wonder what it is does, it, no does one anyone want to unseal no one has brushed their teeth oh yeah oh, no uh, one no one picked that Mayor Roth is, is joining us now. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, I'm told that Mayor Roth is now in the room and uh, he's here to uh, wrap up the competition and make the presentation for the top three awards this morning. Mayor Roth, if you're ready, over to you. Well, I, I'm somewhat ready. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha everybody, congratulations. Uh, it's a, a great uh, um, group and so proud of all of you for everything that you've, you've been doing to make our community a better place. Um, Noel, I, I don't have the, the names yet, so. Oh, okay. Um, Wing it. <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, what I'll do is, uh, so uh, actually, Renee, since you have this information, can you um, coordinate with, with Mayor Roth? I can't. I will send that over right away. Okay, you can send it in, in a personalized chat, I think. Uh, <laughs> I just gotta find you in this big long list of people and I will send it <laughs> right over. And, um, All right. Mayor Roth, share and, a little bit about what you're up to and, and about COVID-19 on the island. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, there, there's a lot of things that are happening with COVID. Our island has actually done better than just about every place else in the world. And I, I think that has a lot to do with the community here and how seriously we've taken this. You know, we have, in, even in our state, we have one of the best um, mask usage rates. So people have been um, doing a great job 
you know, socially distancing, wearing their masks, trying to, to do the right things. And that's kept our numbers down significantly. Um, we're looking at transitioning now. We've been doing testing at the, um, at the airports. Um, so some of you may have seen some of the things in the news. Um, we're gonna be moving to, um, we've actually moved to um, something where people who are coming in, if they're vaccinated, we're not doing the second test. Um, and anybody wanna take a wild guess how, what percentage of the people coming in from the mainland, um, actually coming into Hawaii County, um, haven't been um, or have been vaccinated? I don't really want to take a, a wild guess. 80%. 25%. So someone said 80%? Yes, me. 80% is a pretty good guess. Um, <laughs> uh, 70 to 80% of the people we're seeing have already been vaccinated. Yeah. And the other night we had a plane from Los Angeles into Kona where 100% of the people on board were vaccinated. That's awesome. So that's been pretty amazing. So. Uh, we've been transitioning. We've been working with the others, the other mayors and the governor. Um, and so we'll start having not a, a vaccination passport, but a vaccination exemption for people who have been vaccinated so they can come and, and help our island. So that's some of the things I, I have some uh, I have some uh, some names and uh, and some positions. So should I, do you want me to go into that? Um, here we go. Third yes, place. Sir. Third place is team five, the tri five. Okay, congratulations. Woohoo! The second place team. Uh oh, hang on. Second place team. I just lost my chat there for a second. Um, is team 11 just getting started? Okay. So I got to find Renee's. Oh wait, go to row. So I have a third place team three live. So Renee, I'm I'm not sure how I'm reading this. If I'm reading it wrong. Hello, Renee, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Sorry, ignore the ignore the place on that one. Okay. Oh, so is that is that the first place <laughs> yeah. team? Okay, sorry. So, all right. So the first place team is Team Three Live. So congratulations to Team Three Live. Woohoo! I'm just Yay. trying to find if there's anything else that I'm missing here, Renee. Nope, you got it all. All right. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations to our our fish tank winners. Um, and thank you all for you now, you know, I think everybody is a winner for, for getting in this um, and entering this contest and to a big um, mahalo to all the mentors and everybody else in the background who, you know, helped to put this on people like Gail Takaki, who's, you know, been there from the very beginning, making sure that things happen and, and Noel Moran and um, Doug Adams and Jim's, you know, I, I know that you come on to this so. I just want to thank everybody for, for, for being a part. You're, you're all making um, our island a better place. One of the things that we've been talking about from the mayor's office is sustainability. And my goal with sustainability or my definition of sustainability is making sure that we have an island where our kids can raise their kids and their kids can raise their kids. And really the way you get there is through projects like this where you know, you're building mentorships. So our students get to know people that will be their future employers, our future employers who are, you know, a lot of the mentors get to see the real talent because Hawaii Island has real talent. So I just want to thank you all for everything that you're doing. Mahalo. Thank you so thank much, you, Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, um, we're, uh, now that we have the prizes named by the mayor, uh, I could fill in a bit of information there on the uh, what the prizes actually entail. So th for the third place team, which was uh, Tri Five, they receive uh, $200 for each team member, 
and they get to direct $500 to their favorite STEM organization of choice. Uh, the second place prize, uh, just getting started, each team member receives $250 and they will get to, to direct $750 to their favorite STEM organization. And finally, the first place team live, they get $300 per uh, participant, plus they get to direct $1,200 to Next Tech. I mean, to the STEM organization of choice. Congratulations, all of you. Fantastic. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. That was terrific. Your comments were very interesting, particularly about the COVID uh, status today for people visiting the island. We're really headed in the right direction. Now that we've finished the awards, uh, we have a, a wrap up uh, presentation from the president of Next Tech Hawaii. That's Noel Morin, and he's also a board member of many local organizations dedicated to both sustainability and resilience. Noel, please take it away. Thank you, Jim. And uh, uh, thank you as well to uh, uh, Mayor Roth for taking time. I know uh, you had quite a busy day today and uh, being able to join us here is, is quite an honor. So thank you. Um, I'd like to again, congratulate all of our fish tank teams. It was a, a great pleasure to be able to see the presentations today and to learn about all of the projects that we've been working on for the past couple of months. I hope that you continue to develop these ideas and that they translate into actual solutions. Um, uh, as described by Ravi and others, uh, the, 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 idea, uh, the ideas are great, but uh, they, can also, um, they can also form the seeds for other uh, innovations that you know, could eventually um, even add, add even more value. So um, I, you know, I, I invite you to continue um, iterating on the concepts, uh, continue to uh, work on the, uh, the process that you've, you've uh, developed um, you know, during the past uh, two, and a half, uh, two and a half months. Uh, importantly, I, I, I hope that the knowledge and the experiences that you've gained over this past journey will contribute to your future success. To all our winners, uh, you will be invited to an innovation meeting where you will have the opportunity to meet with STEM professionals so you can have a deeper discussion about your projects and possible next steps. I also would like to uh, call attention to uh, an invitation, a coming invitation to career exploration where you can actually participate in a, a career interest assessment and then uh, a career match with uh, local professionals. I'd like to close by thanking once again, everybody who's made this special event possible. Uh, I, I, I can't go through all the names, they're, they're in the program, it's quite a long list, but I'd like to call attention to, uh, or say thanks to our uh, fish tank teams, uh, the coordinators, our mentors, our subject matter experts, our speakers today, and our esteemed judges. Um, also, of course, the parents and families of our fish tank teams. Uh, last but not least, uh, there were a number of helpers, um, uh, including folks who are here today, who uh, slaved over this process and the competition, preparing all the materials, facilitating the meetings, spending their Saturdays to help encourage and empower our youth. Um, this competition could not have been possible without each of you. Lastly, uh, special thanks to Big Island Engineering Association for the invaluable support and guidance and also to Hawaii Community Foundation for the financial support of our programs. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And until uh, Fish Tank 2022, uh, mahalo. I think that concludes our program. Jim, do you wanna do the honors? Okay, that was terrific. Thank you, Noel. And what a great program. I was uh, very pleased to participate and uh, have my small part in this. And as a scientist entrepreneur, I saw a lot of great ideas and want to applaud particularly the students. They just did great. So congratulations and good luck going forward. Thank you all for joining us. Aloha. Good job, Jake. Man behind the curtain. Thank you.
<laughs> great job, everyone. Thanks. Great Have job, a great everybody. weekend. Bye. Bye. Great job, fish tank. Great job, fish tank. Great job. Thanks, Next everyone. Year. Good job. Bye. Great job. Thank you, everyone. Thank you from the parents. Bye. Thank you. Uh -huh.